Ladies and gentlemen, Colgate Dental Cream presents the Dennis Day Show, written by Frank Galen. With Paula Winslow, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, yours truly, Vern Smith, and starring our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Twice a day and before every date, use Colgate Dental Cream. To clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Here's Dennis to sing Managua, Nicaragua. Managua, Nicaragua is a beautiful town. You buy a hacienda for a few paces down. You give it to the lady you are trying to win. But her papa doesn't let you come in. Managua, Nicaragua is a heavenly place. You ask a senorita for a lethal embrace. She answers you, caramba, scramba, bambrito. In Managua, Nicaragua, that's no. I have been to many tropic ports. I might include even Brooklyn. If you're ever feeling out of sorts. I'd like to recommend a look in Managua, Nicaragua. What a wonderful spot. There's coffee and bananas and a temperature hot. So take a trip and on a ship go sailing away across the Agua to Managua, Nicaragua. Ole, ole, samba, rumba, y cadera, cadera, la bagadera. If you're ever feeling out of sorts, I'd like to recommend the look in Managua, Nicaragua, what a wonderful spot. There's coffee and bananas and a temperature hot. So take a trip and on a ship go sailing away across the Agua to Managua, Nicaragua, ole. Si salia caballo de Tijuana, tan aparado, can he tempo to remind me of cerveza? Hey, Pedro, who picked the key? I think it must be a baritone. <laughs> across the Managua, Nicaragua, ole Across the Agua to Managua, Nicaragua, ole Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning your teeth than Colgate Dental Cream for Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And use Colgate Dental Cream twice a day and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Did you ever notice a funny thing concerning people who are related to us? When they're poor, they're called relatives. But when they're rich, ah, then they're known as family connections. Well, at the Anderson boarding house where our young hero Dennis Day rooms, we find Mrs. Anderson engaging her lord and master in a conversation about a family connection. Herbert, I've been thinking a good deal lately about your sister, Pauline. Have you, Pupsy? <laughs> yes. She's a splendid woman, Herbert. She has the type of character I've always admired. Yes, when her husband passed away, he left her simply loaded with it. <laughs> Herbert, I feel we should be extremely nice to your sister. That's why we've written to her and invited her to come and live with us. We have? We have. But since this house isn't big enough for your sister, too, we decided to sell it and buy a larger one. We did? We did? <laughs> 
Any comments? Uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just uh, grateful to us for taking me into our confidence like this. <laughs> so far, all we've been offered for this place is $4,000. Nowhere near enough to buy something larger with. Nevertheless, we... Good morning, folks. Oh, good morning, Dennis. Good morning. Nevertheless, Herbert, we must locate a larger house immediately. It's absolutely vital under the circumstances. Uh, yes, of course. Oopsie. I'll have the house swept in an hour so we can go right out and look. You see that you get your ironing done in time. <laughs> yes, I'll give it everything I have, passion flower. <laughs> Were you saying something about a larger house, Mrs. Anderson? Yes, we're going to need one from now on. Mrs. Anderson, you don't mean... That is, it isn't... You, you don't mean you're expecting another Anderson. Well, that's exactly what I mean. Oh, my gosh. I noticed you were eating like a horse lately. <laughs> what? And here you are doing housework. Shouldn't you be off your feet? Off my feet? Of course. How soon is the... I mean, when is the latest Anderson due to arrive? Why, sometime next week. Mrs. Anderson, drop that broom and lie down immediately. <laughs> Have you gone crazy? Get out of here. Yes, ma'am. But if there's something you want all of a sudden, like a pickle or a lemon malted milk with ripe olives in it, don't hesitate to call on me. You hear from me if I feel the urge for either. Now go. Yes, ma'am. Gosh, women sure get irritable at a time like this. Oh, well, I can understand it. I suppose I'd be irritable myself if I... Now I'm being silly. <laughs> Did my wife... Gee, congratulations, have... Mr. Anderson. I just heard. Uh, heard? Heard what? Why, the wonderful news about the new visitor that's on the way. Oh, that. Gosh, aren't you excited? What for? As far as I'm concerned, it just means more washing and ironing. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, that's no attitude to take. Well, maybe not, but it wouldn't surprise me if she turned out to be quite a nuisance. She? Couldn't it be a he? What are you talking about? Of course it couldn't. Gee, what confidence. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, I've heard of cases where it turned out to be a he. There was one right in my own family. <laughs> Dennis, our visitor can't be anything but a she. She can't? Look, sisters are girls, aren't they? Yes. Well? When my father had that talk with me, he must have left something out. <laughs> sakes, Dennis. Now, my sister's coming to visit, and she's a girl like Your all... sister? Yes. Then you're not going to have a baby? I consider it most unlikely. Gosh. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Dennis. Mother was just telling me about Aunt Pauline coming to live with her. Not what you think, Mildred. She's a full-grown woman. Well, well, yes, of course. How old did you think she was? Never mind. I just made another one of my natural mistakes. <laughs> Gee, Daddy, won't it be wonderful living in a great big house? Maybe we can buy that big Burnside place over on Elm. Oh, they want 8000 for the Burnside house, Mildred. We couldn't buy it unless we got 8000 for this one. And nobody would pay that much. No, not unless a couple of real estate brokers were to get interested in it and start bidding against it. Daddy! Uh huh? Suppose a big builder from out of town dropped in at a real estate office and hinted that he was interested in the Anderson property. Say! Yeah, but where are we going to get a big builder from? I'm afraid I know. <laughs> you can do it easily, Dennis. But it's silly, Mildred. I don't know anything about building. Honest, I was 20 years old before I learned to make anything with my tinker toy. <laughs> Dennis, we've just got to sell this house for $8,000. You've got to be the big builder. But, Mildred, I never built anything, not Dennis? even... Dennis? Not even my resistance. <laughs> okay, I'll try it. Come in. How do you do? You're Mr. Rowland, the real estate broker? Yes. Glad to know you, Rowland. I'm Frank Lloyd Day, the big architect and builder. Oh, really? Oh, where are you from, Mr. Day? Uh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, why, that's my hometown. <laughs> Nobody's got the kind of luck I have. <laughs> What firm are you connected with, Mr. Day? I know everyone in Oklahoma City. Well, I'm referring, of course, to Oklahoma City, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, 
I say. Don't believe I know the place. Uh, just what have you built, Mr. Day? Well, uh, you've heard of the Empire State Building? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I was formerly connected with the firm that built it. Oh. How about the Chrysler Building? <laughs> well, my brother's with the firm that built that. Leaving buildings for the moment, we come now to the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Oh, yes, I know all about that job. And so we say farewell to the Golden Gate Bridge <laughs> and find ourselves at the Grand Coulee Dam. Mr. Day, you're not going to tell me you built the Grand Coulee Dam. I did. I designed it all by myself and also hired the coolies. <laughs> I suppose next you'll be telling me you built Notre Dame Cathedral. And why shouldn't I? Because it was built in the 12th century. Yeah, that's why I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, Mr. Day, it strikes me that you're not quite the fool you'd have me believe you are. I have a feeling that you're a very shrewd young man. Let's play that hunch for all it's worth, shall we? <laughs> There's only one reason for you to come and see me. You're interested in property. Well, I'm not saying I am, and I'm not saying I'm not. All I'm saying is, keep going. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. What kind of property, Mr. Day? Corners. Greatest kind of property there is. Why, I've come out time after time for shorter streets so we'd have more corners. <laughs> uh, I see. Just what corner in Weaverville are you interested in? Uh-uh, now you're getting too inquisitive, Mr. Rowland. I must bid you good day. What? Huh? Thought you could pump me, huh? So that's your game, is it? But you came to my office. You tried to trick me. You left your door open. <laughs> but you phoned for an appointment. Another trick, putting your name in the phone book. <laughs> now, see, here. I know, I know. You'd like to find out who owns the property I'm after. Boy, what you'd give to hear me mention the name of Herbert Anderson. <laughs> Fat chance. I'm too smart for you, Roland. Uh, Herbert Anderson, where's his property? Wouldn't you like to know? You think I'm going to tell you which corner of 4th and Maple it's on? <laughs> I know how to keep my big mouth shut. Uh, the Anderson property at 4th and Maple. I'm warning you, pal. Don't try to cut in my deal, see? Who, me? Well, gosh, no, of course not. Do I, do I look like a dirty crook? I'm not saying you do, and I'm not saying you don't. All I'm saying is, I'm very happy with the way things are going. <laughs> actually coming over here to see about buying this house? I think so, Mrs. Anderson. And you think he'll pay us $8,000 for it? Oh, well, sure, Mother. Dennis is going to bid him up till we've got the highest price possible. Yeah, I'm going to pretend I'm a big real estate operator. You have confidence in me, haven't you, Mrs. Anderson? Huh? <laughs> huh? Oh. Oh. Oh, golly, there he is. Ask her, Dennis, while I get out of sight. Does Mrs. Anderson live? <laughs> oh, so it's you. I thought you'd be sticking your nose in here, Roland. Yeah? Well, I got a right to this property, too. Well, I thought first... Gentlemen, gentlemen, there'll be none of that. My property will be sold to the highest bidder. Oh, good. Mrs. Anderson, I'm prepared to pay you $5,000 for this place. I bid $5,050. <laughs> How much? $5,500. That's better. I'll make it 6000 6500 Now, wait a minute. Let's talk a little sense here, Day. Here, have a cigar. That's not my brand, bud. Oh? <laughs> what kind do you prefer? Chocolate. <laughs> oh, wise guy, huh? I'll tell you what I'll do, Mrs. Anderson. I'll give you $7,000 and not a cent more. 7500 8000 Splendid, as far as I... 8500 Oh. Mr. Day. Nine thousand. Sold. That's just ninety five hundred. <laughs> you win, Day. I can't bid any higher. Good. I thought you'd. Huh? <laughs> you heard me. Take the house. Now wait a minute. That's all there is to it. Nine thousand is my final offer. Suppose I come down a little and you stay where you are. <laughs> no thanks. I don't like the looks of this. I'm getting out of here. Wait a minute. We'll start the bidding again, and you can steal the place. I bid forty dollars. Forty dollars? Sure. Well, I bid fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty-nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's all. I thought this smelled funny. I wouldn't touch this place for nothing. Good day. Mrs. Anderson, I just know you're going to comment on this. <laughs> that is, if I'm lucky. Comment? Do you know what I could do to you, Dennis Day? Yes, ma'am, but don't do it. You have enough troubles now. Don't add a boy slaughter charge to them. <laughs> I guess now we'll never get to live in that beautiful Burnside house. No, I'm afraid not, Mildred. Well, was Mother annoyed at what happened? Well, I got the impression that she was. She told me if I ever spoke a word to her again, she'd knock me so flat I'd have to wear wedgies to keep my ears from dragging. <laughs> Golly. And then I'll bet she told you to pack up and get out, huh? Yeah. Oh, well, it's happened before and you're still here. Yeah, but this is the first time she ever sold my bed to the Salvation Army. <laughs> If we could only think of some way to get hold of that Burnside house But how could we? It would cost $8,000 and only a millionaire has that much money I said something? No I have a strange feeling I'm not gonna either Well, I'll get it How do you do? My name is Jackson Is this uh, Mr. Rowland, the real estate broker? Oh, no, sir, Mr. Rowland left some time ago Oh, well, that's too bad His office told me I might find him here I'm, uh, I'm a real estate dealer, too, and I was interested in buying the Burnside property, which I understand he's handling. Well, I'm very sorry, but Why, he... Harvey, this gentleman doesn't need to see Mr. Rowland. Harvey? Well, that's your name, isn't it? Harvey Burnside? Huh? Are you... Oh, yeah, so it is. You have something in mind, Pamela? Well, naturally, Harvey. Imagine me being so absent-minded, forgetting my own name. <laughs> isn't that a panic, uh, uh... You just said it, dear. Yeah, but it's gone again. <laughs> Let's see. Ruth? No. Grace? No. Sam? Of course not. <laughs> it's Pamela, dear. Pamela, of course. Oh, I tell you, this absent-mindedness is a curse. Well, now, uh, do I understand that you're the Mr. and Mrs. Burnside who own the house that's for sale? That's right. And if you'd like to see it, we'd be only too glad to show it to you. Uh, shall we say five o'clock, Mr. Jackson? Well, that's splendid, Mrs. Burnside. I'll see you both then. Goodbye. Gosh, Mildred, this is the best idea you ever had. What is it? <laughs> Look, there's no one living in the Burnside house, uh -huh. so we'll go over and mess the place up. Yeah? Not badly, but just so it looks discouraging. That'll bring the price down to where we can afford it. You know something, Mildred? With your ideas, we'll never have to worry about the housing problem after we're married. Well, why not? We're going to spend most of our time in jail. <laughs> Gosh, Mildred, don't you think we've gone too far boarding up the stairs and all the windows? We've got to make Mr. Jackson think the house is undesirable, Dennis. But wasn't it enough when we shut off the water and lights and painted rat holes in all the corners? <laughs> we can't take any chance. Oh, there he is. Now do everything you can to discourage him. Okay. Come in. Hello. Uh, say, where are you folks? It's... Kind of dark in here. Right over here, Mr. Jackson. But watch that floorboard you're walking on. Floorboard? Yeah, it's kind of warped. Every once in a while, boing! <laughs> and you're pinned to the ceiling. Oh, really? Yeah, but outside of that, the house is perfect. Uh, maybe Mr. Jackson would like to look around, dear. Well, yes, yes, and I'd like to start with the upstairs, if I may. Why, certainly. Now, let's see. Where did I put that ladder? You go upstairs by ladder? Have to. The rope broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, never mind. Never mind. I think we can pass that up. Uh, what's up there? The bedroom and uh, the bath? The bedrooms and the what? The bath. The bath. Surely you have a bathroom. By George, Pamela, I'll bet that's it. Why, of course. You'll bet that's what? Mr. Jackson, did you ever have the feeling that something was missing and you couldn't quite put your finger on what it was? <laughs> you mean, uh, but where do you go when you want to wash up? Oh, that's no trouble. There's a filling station less than a mile from here. <laughs> well, I guess I've heard everything now. Oh, but you haven't heard any of our real advantages yet. For instance, we have no garbage problem here at all. You haven't? Nope. Just toss it out in the backyard. Well, don't you know that's a violation of the law? Garbage must be taken to the city dump. I know. That's our backyard. <laughs> Great Scott. I, I'm getting out of here. Oh, but you've hardly looked at the place, Mr. Jackson. 
Dear, you must show Mr. Jackson our lovely dropped living room. Oh, you bet, dear. Do you happen to remember where it dropped to? <laughs> oh, I've heard enough. Mr. Burnside, I wouldn't recommend this place to a client of mine if he was living in a tree. And I'll see that nobody else buys it either. Good day, sir. Dennis, we did it. The house will sell for a song now. Boy, I sure hope so. Oh, it will. And Mother can't be angry with you anymore. Why, when she hears about it, she'll kiss you. Mildred, don't say that. There must be some other way we can make up. <laughs> oh, Dennis, we're all so proud of you. Gee, thanks. You must have been awfully convincing, my boy. Oh, yes. We just got a call from Mr. Rowland. He says we can have the Burnside house for only $4,000. But gosh, do you think we should live there? There's no stairs and no bathroom, and it's full of loose boards. <laughs> Dennis, you made those things up. Did I? Oh, yeah. Gee, I guess I was convincing. <laughs> Come in. How do you do? I... Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Burnside. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Jackson. You see, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson here are my parents. Oh. Well, do they know my client isn't going to buy the Burnside house? Yes, we know, and we think it's wonderful. Uh, I'll say it's wonderful. You know, you nearly had to live there. Live there? Yes. You see, my client is your sister Pauline. She was going to buy the house and make you a present of it. Oh, my soul and body. <laughs> Dennis Day? I know. You'd like a word with me. I would. No, please, Mrs. Anderson. The last time you had a word with me, I couldn't sit down for a week. Come here, you! No! <laughs> Dennis Day will be back in just a moment with a song. But first, here's a fact worth knowing. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And just how important that is, our Colgate players are standing by to demonstrate for you. Our curtain goes up now on the tragic end of a buggy ride in New York Central Park. Well, thanks for the buggy ride, Dick, but this is the end of the line. I'm getting out right now. Hey, wait a minute, sugar. You can't open fire on a guy just because he tries for a kiss. Well, that's not why I'm walking out on you, Dick. Then why are you? Don't hold out on me, sugar. Sing out. Well, Dick, honey, I just positively can't. But, but your dentist can. And here's what Dick found out. Scientific tests have proved that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, Colgate Dental Cream's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth. Cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. In fact, nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate Dental Cream is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So, to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. <laughs> Here's Dennis with Charles Dant and the orchestra to sing the beautiful arrangement of We Could Make Such Beautiful Music Together. We could make such beautiful music together mm -hmm. We could sing the loveliest love songs together Good. 
such beautiful music. Good night, everybody. Dennis Day can be heard with Jack Benny every Sunday. And be sure and be with us again next week for another Dennis Day program. More songs, more adventures in the life of our star, Dennis Day. Meanwhile, be sure to use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. It's new, it's amazingly different. Not a liquid, not a soap, but a utterly new cream shampoo that leaves hair soft, radiant, glamorous, and also easy to manage. It's Luster Cream Shampoo, created by Kay Dumit, who combined rich lanolin with secret ingredients. Use Luster Cream Shampoo and see how soft, how naturally lovely, how brilliantly alive and well-behaved your hair can be. Ask for Luster Cream Shampoo at cosmetic counters. <laughs> This is Vern Smith reminding you that housewives know only too well how every penny counts these days. Well, here's an easy way to add more to your shopping budget. Dealers are now paying higher prices for used fats than ever before. So save used cooking fats and oils. Turn them in for cash. Remember, too, industry urgently needs fats and oils to help produce soap, automobiles, refrigerators, all the things you want and need. What's more, the shortage of fats and oils is a worldwide problem. So for your own good, use and reuse fats and oils as often as you can. When they're no longer usable, save them in tin cans and turn them into your dealer. He'll pay you more for your used fats. And don't forget, prices for used fats and oils are higher than ever before. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.